Thank you very much. Uh, for the debate, the member for Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's always a pleasure to stand in the House and speak to important issues, Speaker. And I have to say, uh, uh, joining my colleagues from London West, uh, um, Niagara West, Glanbrook, Trinity Spadina, Hamilton Mountain, uh, it's a very powerful personal reflection, Speaker. Uh, today, I always love Private Members Hour. It gives us a chance to talk about you know, issues of mutual interest and concern, but today is particularly important. And I want to thank, uh, in that regard, my colleague from Eglinton Lawrence for tabling this conversation today, Speaker, by bringing forward this bill, 141, the Pregnancy and Infant Loss Research and Support Act. Uh, I want to thank him because this is an important conversation for us to have, not in a finger-pointing kind of way, but in a let's embrace uh, the survivors of loss and, and let's do that in a compassionate and empathetic way. This bill, this conversation, addresses an issue that is often underreported and one which we in Ontario and across the country often have a hard time talking about. And yet, it is an issue which touches so many lives, one that has touched, I am sure, Mr. Speaker, virtually all of the members in this House, and sadly, it has touched me and my family personally. The expected birth of a child is supposed to be one of the happiest moments in one's life, a time full of excitement and wonder and ultimately hope for the future, and far too often these magical moments are cut short by unexpected events. There is no reason for this subject to remain a taboo, and that is exactly why today's debate is so important. Because especially here in Ontario, we are proud of our ability to speak openly about the issues that impact our lives. That is why I'm pleased to say that if passed, this bill will proclaim October 15th as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day in Ontario. Sometimes one of the most powerful and important things you can do to affect change is to simply raise awareness about an issue, and this bill will certainly do just that. Of course, awareness itself is not enough. We need to deal with the complexities that lie at the heart of issues relating to pregnancy loss and infant death. Individuals who go through these extremely trying experiences need a range of supports to help them cope and to assist them in their recovery. Because each individual and family's experience is unique, there is no one-size-fits-all approach to providing support when it's needed most. That's why, importantly, this bill calls for development and expansion of existing programs across Ontario to provide counselling and support to mothers and their families who have experienced pregnancy loss or infant death, in addition to calling for more research into the prevention and understanding of these issues. An evidence-based approach is needed to help us to help mothers, fathers and their families and all of their loved ones indeed when they need it most to heal their wounds, both seen and unseen. According to a study conducted by the University of Rochester and published in the British Journal of Psychiatry, the depression and anxiety experienced by many women after a miscarriage can continue for years, even after the birth of another child. Sadly, we hear stories of survivors whose lived experience of loss simply isn't being validated or supported. For example, mothers are told that they will be fine once they have a healthy baby, when the research demonstrates that this is simply not true. Of the women who've had one miscarriage or stillbirth before giving birth to a healthy child, for example, almost 13 per cent still had symptoms of depression 33 months after their new baby is born. Of those with two previous losses, almost 19 per cent had symptoms of depression, again almost three years after the birth of a healthy child. That's close to three years, as I mentioned, of struggling to bear a burden that is to all of us inconceivable. As the member from Niagara West Glanbrook said in his remarks, and indeed, Speaker, in his extraordinarily personal remarks, no one should have to bury a child. This is completely outside the natural order. Prenatal loss is not routinely considered a risk factor for antenatal or postpartum depression in the same way as, for example, personal or family history of depression or exposure to other of life's stresses. We need to change the way we need to think about this, the way that we think about this type of loss, and that is what this bill hopes to accomplish. It would recommend necessary targeted support because, as we know, maternal depression does not just affect mothers, but entire families. Speaker, it is our duty as public servants to support Ontarians who suffer such tremendous losses. Mr. Speaker, it's often said that it takes a village to raise a child, but when a child is lost, that village suffers profoundly. I commend my colleague, the member for Eglinton Lawrence, for introducing a bill which would have long-standing positive impacts, not just for the women who have lost a child, but for their families and their circle of care, too. 
I urge all members of this House to support this bill because no one should feel like they are going through these incredibly difficult times alone without the necessary support. So let's make sure, Speaker, that they don't have to. Thank you very much.